Hello, kids. How we doing today? Woke up to snow, huge snowflakes, blowing snow, limbs on the ground. Uh, just have little desire to, to go anywhere today, so why not make some videos? Uh, if you hear anything that sounds like I'm beating an animal, um, as I've stated in other videos, Mama left, and Mama's boy down here, Mikey, Metal Mikey, is upset. So if you hear a, a grumble or a moan, uh, that's what it is. Um, this video is the um, response to uh, Scott over at uh, the Rock Scout. Um, he created a um, metal tag video for 2021. I've never done one of these before, but it's a cool concept. Um, he put out 20 questions. Uh, for you to answer about stuff in your collection, what you are looking forward to in the year, etc., etc. Um, so I thought I would give my uh, response to that today. Um, some some of this is going to come off a little negative because some of these questions, um, there really is no way around it but to be negative on some of them. So apologies in advance. I'm um, first though. In the background, we're listening to orgies. Yeah, Orgies of Abomination by Cemetery Lust. Great artwork. This is a solid, straight-up death metal on uh, Hell's Headbangers. Uh, I found this. Uh, this may have been a random band camp find. I always get... There's a lot of bands with uh, the name Cemetery in them. So I, uh, I thought I'd heard this before, and I thought I've heard of the band, and I, I hadn't. So, so far, I'm, I'm digging it quite a bit. So let's jump into the vinyl, or not the vinyl tag, that's a different one. This is the metal tag. Um, so the first question, uh, music spoiled by vocals, when you get the negativity started um, right away. This may not be a popular opinion, um, not that I really care about that. Um, and I discovered metal and really started diving in in the late 80s and early 90s, and I heard a lot about this band... Uh, cathedral. Um, I say it all the time, but I didn't have the internet. I saw an ad for um, this album, the Ethereal Ethereal Mirror, um, in I believe it was Metal Maniacs. Uh, it was on Earache. I thought, hey, it's Earache. Um, I'll give it a shot. Uh, I put the album on. There's an intro, Violet Vortex, and I was like, okay. Uh, and then the song Ride started, and it has that kind of palm muted E, you know, ding, 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 ding. And I was like, oh wow, I made a, I spent fourteen ninety nine on this. I made a, a good purchase. And then the first line of the album is, well, hey, what do you gotta say? And I think I just sang it better than is it Lee Dorian. I think is who sings this. The, the vocals on Cathedral, I cannot fucking stand. Um, but I love the music, and I've tried ever since 1993, so 27 years, I have tried to get into Cathedral, and the fucking vocals, I just, I keep the, I keep the fucking CD, I've had, this is the original press, it even has a little hype sticker on the front, this could be one of the most important sounds from the heavier end of the metal spectrum ever. A lot of people love Cathedral. I love the music in Cathedral. I can't stand the vocals. It reminds me of if you had a band, let's say, and you were just starting out, and your buddies came over, and your vocalist called and said, hey guys, I can't make it, and the band was like, well, okay, we'll, we'll get together and, and jam, and uh, we'll just go in the basement, right? And your dad's home, though and uh, your dad hears you guys playing down in the basement and he knows you're kind of bummed that the vocals didn't show up so your dad wants to act like the cool guy and come down in the basement and grab the mic and he comes down and you, you start the song ride and your dad comes in and your bandmates are like dude what what's your dad doing and then your dad grabs the mic and says well hey i just Sorry to start this on a negative note, but I do love the music in Cathedral. I think I own three or four of their CDs. I just, it's one of those love-hate things where I can't get rid of the shit because I like the music so much. And I keep thinking all the love that I hear about Cathedral. And I think uh, Lee Dorian, is that his name? I can't remember. 
Uh, I think he had a has a newer band called With the Dead or something like that. He even fucking bought that. It's like I'm a glutton for punishment. So, hate the vocals. Love the music. I'm um, next up. Uh, so I'm gonna answer the next two questions with the same. Yeah, with the same. Um, same answer. The second question is an album you love that lets you down by bad production, and then um, a band that suffers from a weak member. To me, this one's kind of a no-brainer, and I would guess pretty much every metalhead is going to answer this this way. Um, and Justice for All, everyone knows the bass is absent. I don't know if that's considered bad production. I think that's probably more um, at the mastering level, where they're changing the levels. I think the sound, um, sound-wise, this is great. This is an original press, by the way, if anyone cares. Uh, I've still got the original... Uh, original innards you know we're all with got their cool sunglasses on um so overall the production on this album's great i think it's just the missing bass i think if the bass were in this a little more this album would be flawless i love every song on here i love the album art uh the whole and justice for all theme um the the lyrics on this album especially like eye of the beholder talking about freedom of speech and freedom of choice um, was an issue back when this came out in 98 or 88 good god I'm old um, this kind of shit's happening today where people are trying to decide what you can say and not say no matter how good or bad it is um, very timely um, a classic I, I still listen to it every once in a while this day um, and then the third question about which band actually suffers from a weak member I think Lars Ulrich is a kind of a given in Metallica I'm not knocking the guy as a human being um, but I think if Metallica had a different drummer, um, they're already at a meteoric, meteoric, meteoric rise. Um, the biggest rock band in the world, biggest metal band ever, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so it's not like they're hurting for a drummer. But I think Lars, I think his drumming is kind of uninspired and just kind of basic. Um, it's just very milk toast drumming. He does what he needs to do. If there is fills, are very boring. Um, just very un uninventive, so it's not a knock on him, but if they had like a guy like Pete Sandoval from Morbid Angel or something, imagine how great Metallica would be. Or um, Nick Menza, I think was his name, for Megadeth, even him. I mean, they'd just be so fucking good. So, um, for show an album that you, that to you defines heavy, um, in the metal world, this could be a lot of things depending on the word heavy and your definition of heavy are we talking emotion are we talking music are we talking um, atmosphere um, all of those things are elements of, of metal um, but to me um, this album and especially um, one song on here defines heavy um, this is Yob uh, with um, our raw heart and the song is um, the screen um, that song is I think nine to ten minutes of just the, the the riff just weighs you down it's so heavy um and yob their whole catalog's very heavy if you've not listened to yob um you need to stop watching my video and and listen to them um they define heavy in my opinion when you think um emotion um riffs um, a lot of people talk about Black Sabbath being heavy and, and other bands with these um, slow, doomy riffs. But these guys, in my opinion, perfected um, slow, doom, depressive type metal. So if you have not checked out Yob and you want heavy, uh, start with this album and then explore their whole catalog. Um, next up, show an album recommended to you by the music community. Uh, I saw this on a video, I don't remember which one, um, and you know, you hear a lot of people talk about music on these YouTube channels, including mine, um, and I, what I usually do is watch videos, and then I pull up band camps as I'm watching videos and, and check out stuff, and a lot of it uh, is good, some of it not so much, but this one kind of came out of the blue, uh, but I apologize, I can't remember who talked about it or where I saw it, but it is a band called R-A-Y-R, uh, and the album is called the dark I don't know if it's considered an album or not I think there's only there's six songs on this um, it's just great great black metal I was blown away when I got this and, and started listening to it so um, if you haven't checked out R-A-Y-R -A -Y -R, be sure to do so 
um, show an album that takes your musical taste in a different direction. I didn't know if this meant it had to be uh, metal or not, um, but there's an artist that I think metalheads would really love, and I don't hear a lot of metalheads surprisingly talk about him, um, but it's, it's Tom Waits. Um, this is the album Rain Dogs, but um, Tom Waits has been around since the early 70s. Um, what I like about Tom Waits is if you like folk, if you like pop, if you like metal, if you like um, pretty much any kind of music, you like rough vocals, he's got some of that. Um, it's, it's a guy that you never know what you're going to get with each album, but you know it's going to be great. Um, I'll put some links below to some of his heavier songs, but this is... Um, this is a lot of people's favorites, Rain Dogs. Um, there's a lot of songs you probably know from your um, musical history, and you probably don't even realize Tom Waits uh, wrote the songs like Downtown Train from that Rod Stewart covered. That's Tom Waits. Um, old 95, or Old 55, I think. That's I think the Eagles did that one. Tom Waits wrote that. Um, he's, he's an actor. He's been in movies you've probably seen. You don't even realize you know... Who Tom Waits is, but this guy's one of the most eclectic artists that I've ever come across in my life, and everything he puts out, I um, I pick up. It's just um, he has some jazz stuff. He's got, I mean, you just name it. Um, but I'll put some links below, trying to show the diversity of, of Tom Waits and his uh, just his um, his, his persona, his musical taste. He's all he doesn't use standard instruments sometimes. He uses weird bells and shit. It's it's a something to behold for your ears if you ever get to see him live. He doesn't really tour, hasn't toured in a long time. I hope he does one last time. Uh, he's getting up there in age, so check out Tom Waits if you haven't already. Um, next one, a gem from your collection. I'll have to go with uh, this one's probably my biggest gem. Um, live in Leipzig, however it's pronounced, by Mayhem. And this is an original pressing. I know there was different pressings on this, but this has the uh, the bright purple uh, insert. I don't even know what this goes for anymore. Um, there's the. I think this is the, the inside there. Uh, I don't even know what this goes for anymore. Uh, but mayhem, of course, classic black metal helped start it all. Started the whole movement. Started the church burning, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but this is. Um, this is one of my most prized uh, metal collection collectibles, probably, that I will probably uh, never, ever get rid of. So, yeah, I'll put a link below, though. Mayhem. Um, next question. A band in your collection that formed closest to where you live. So this was kind of tricky because I tried to do some research. There are a few bands um, that formed within about 30 to 45 minutes of me. Um, Ario Speedwagon formed not too far from me, but um, I thought we're going to keep it metal today. Um, this is a band called Deaden, and this is their original um, demo. You can see I paid uh, $3.99 for it. There's not much to it. Um, Deaden makes just great, great black metal. Um, I think this is two songs of them um, Shadowed Soul and Instinct to Kill. This came out in. 1994. Um, they kind of got some notoriety in the underground metal scene, um, and then members went on to form uh, Lividity. I think a lot of people know who Lividity is, uh, but I'm pretty sure I saw these guys play in, in bars uh, in my younger years over in um, Champaign-Urbana, Illinois. Um, you could get into bars. It's a college town, so when you were 19, you could go see live music, um, and these guys were from the area and uh, they were in a lot of, lots of different bands but i think most people know who lividity is so this is where i uh, can't remember the guy's name vaughn is his first name i believe where he got to start was in dead and he's now he's still in lividity to this day i believe um, and that's not even on discogs um i want to add it to discogs but um, i'm currently blocked because i that's a long story i fucked up some stuff that i submitted and they're really anal about it on discogs but whatever um, a metal album you reach for melody wise I don't when we say metal that's a hard term to to uh, pin down 
I don't consider this metal. I consider it more hardcore punk, but I think that uh, qualifies. Um, Over the James by Vale. Um, if you like punk rock slash hardcore with melodies and choruses that you can sing to the top of your lungs, um, this album is for you. Um, there goes that. I've been a huge Avail fan for many years. Um, I had an Avail fan site at one time many years ago, um, and they actually had it linked on their um, webpage. Uh, but over the James from start to finish, this is a Desert Island album for me. I just haven't done a video on it yet. Um, there's not a bad song on here, and I think there's, what, 15 songs maybe? But Deepwood, August, Nickel Bridge, Scuffle Town, Sanctuary 13, Cross Tie, Fifth I mean, these are all, in my opinion, classic um, punk rock hardcore songs. Uh, this came out on Lookout Records. So don't let that scare you away. Uh, but if you want to put on, I still remember the first time I heard an Avail song and I was like, oh fuck, I just discovered something special and I need to go buy this album immediately and this is the first one I picked up. So if you have not heard Avail and you want some melody and you want some sing-along choruses, but not cheesy, just uh, great, great stuff um, and some meaningful lyrics as well, check out Over the James. You will not be disappointed. Um, next up, the album in your collection you would sell first. So this is tricky. Um, I'm, I was thinking with this question, if I'm going to sell something, the odds are I probably need money. And if I need money, I'm not going to sell one of my $2 CDs. I'm going to sell um, one of my most expensive items. Um, so I have uh, this. I think this is still worth a lot of money. But this is an Agaloc wooden box set um, that came out on the end records, I think. I'm going to open it up here. It's probably kind of hard to see. It's, oh shit, it's numbered there on the inside um, out of 500. Um, but what it is, it was just a, a wooden box set. What they did is they put out variation uh, covers. For, I think it was four releases. I actually haven't opened this in a while. Um, Ashes Against the Grain um, of Stone, Wind, and Pillar. Um, Pale Folklore. And The Mantle. Uh, these are um, just variations on the uh, original covers. It's got a slit mat in here. Uh, it's got some other cool stuff in it. And the guy I bought it from, uh, I think it was in Europe, he actually worked on the tour in 2013 or 2012 and he included his all access pass with it so um, I this last I checked was worth quite a bit of money um, so again if I were um, you know I needed to make my mortgage or pay a fucking power bill or something or buy some groceries um, I would sell that I wouldn't like it but I would do it um, which subgenre of metal would you delete from existence? So this is going to be a fun one. Um, I don't know what you call the genre. There's so many gen genres now um, that it's hard to decide what I would get rid of. But I don't know what you call like um, Veil of Maya, Maya, uh, Motionless and White. I, I don't know what genre of music that is. Um, I, I see them. And they wear makeup and and they wear black with chains but the songs they write sound like they want to be heavy but they still want to be played on uh, your local rock radio station um, so I don't do they call it death core uh, I don't know what that whatever that is I would get rid of that altogether um, and that probably sounds like a grumpy old man term I'm, I know a lot of people love motionless and white and Veil of Maya, I think. I might be mixing up the name there. Motionless and White, I know for sure. I, I cannot stand that stuff. But it's popular. The kids love it. So um, if it gets kids into heavier music, eventually, I, I'm all for it. I'm sure some people thought the same thing about stuff I listened to as a kid. Um, and my parents were like, why do you listen to that shit? That's terrible. Um, so if Motionless and White, etc., whatever the genre is if it gets kids into heavier music that's great if it's a gateway but i uh i just i don't like it at all i can't stand it when it comes on i i just it makes me almost physically ill let's put it that way 
Um, next up, the band artist you would most like to see an album from or reissue in 2021. Um, so this is the band. This isn't the album, but this is Jane Doe by Converge. I would like to hear Converge get back to their more brutal style of um, hardcore like they were on Jane Doe. Um, I liked No Heroes quite a bit, and then after that, some of the songs got a little too experimental, and it just didn't sound like Converge. Uh, to me, I know there's a lot of confer Converge, Converge diehards that would disagree with me, but I like to hear Converge get back to the basics and, and um, come back to that heavier balls-to-the-wall start-to-finish uh, mentality. Um, which 80s metal act would you love to see a comeback album from? This is hard because a lot of the bands I liked from the 80s um, were cock rock, butt rock, whatever you want to call it, and a lot of them are dead. Or there's like one original member left, and um, it's not really the same, like LA Guns, Faster Pussycat, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to go, I'm going to cheat a little bit on this one. If Robin Crosby could come back to life, um, and the remaining members of Rat would get back together and record an album, I would be over the moon. Uh, <laughs> I know Robin Crosby's not coming back from the dead, um, but I love Rat. I still love Rat to this day. I talk about him quite a bit. So if they could come back, if Robin Crosby could come back from the dead, they could all bury their hatchets, get together, and make it an album in 2021. That would be awesome. Um... Show an alternative variation of an album cover. I only, I went through my collection and I think this is the only one that I have and it actually just came out, ironically enough, and it's an album I can't stop talking about, but it's Achilles, Achilles, uh, Melano. I got the special edition. Um, this is the uh, original cover that many have probably seen, but this is the uh, special edition that comes in like a slipcase type thing and you actually get this cover. Uh, it's kind of gold and black embossed a little bit. It's very cool. Um, so yeah, that's my... Uh, I thought I had other stuff. At one time I had a alternate version of... I had the original version of Far Beyond Driven from Pantera. Um, that original cover actually had, I think it was a woman bent over with a, a screw drill thing going into her, and I think that got banned, and I actually had... I think it was like an Australian bootleg or maybe not a bootleg the australian box set version of that and i i sold it a long time ago um a band for you that defines metal and show your most metallic album cover were the next two questions and for me um one band answered both of those questions this kind of seemed like a no-brainer too a band that defines metal iron maiden and then the number of the beast for the album cover i mean to me um, whenever I hear heavy metal or people um, saying what's offensive about heavy metal, this one always seems to, to pop up. That's just a great album cover. The title's offensive to people. Number of the Beast. It's satanic. Um, it's got Eddie on the front. Um, it, to me, it just defines metal. And Iron Maiden, of course, whenever you think heavy metal, um, Iron Maiden's always one of the first bands you think of. So kind of killed two birds with one stone on that one. Um, an album you disliked at first but now highly regard. That was pretty easy for me. I think I talked about this album before once. Um, Deliverance by Co Corrosion of Conformity. Um, this came out in 94. I had bought the album before this, which was Blind. Um, to me, Blind was like a, a thrash, um, you know, kind of a thrash slash metal um, album. Great, great stuff. I was not familiar with um, previous Corrosion Conformity and their more punk hardcore albums, so to me they were a thrash band. I still remember the day I bought this on CD. I went to the store and I'm like, oh man, I got the new Corrosion Conformity. I can't wait to, to rock out to this. And I put it in and the first song, Heaven's Not Overflowing, I, I literally thought I bought that the CD itself had the wrong music on it. Um, skipped a song skipped a song and i thought this is the biggest piece of shit i've ever heard and i almost took it and threw it out the window of my car i was very pissed um didn't go back to this album for a very long time and then my musical taste changed a little bit and i realized that you know do you really want a band putting out the same album all the time over and over and over again um no you don't so i i grew to like corrosion conforming it wasn't because 
um, like even Albatross was on the radio, and I was like, ugh, you know, they, they sold out, whatever. Um, but they didn't, um, and to me now this album, from start to finish, is considered, a, for me, um, a classic. And this is an original pressing, by the way. I'm glad to have this in my collection. I like the cover. I like every song on here, even the instrumentals are great. So if you haven't heard Deliverance, um, get past the radio hits. You've probably heard Heaven's Not Overflowing, Albatross, Clean My Wounds and maybe Broken Man. You've probably heard those songs, but um, there's a lot of other gems on here, so be sure to go um, skip the radio hits if you want and, and check that out. Um, and then an album you liked at first, but now disregard. Um, this also seemed like a no-brainer for me. Um, I was a Metallica dick writer, um, especially when it, um, Injustice for All came out. And, and when this came out in 91, um, I loved Metallica still, but the song structures, you know, they started working with Bob Rock. Um, I like some songs on here, not the radio hits were, I liked them, you know, just because it was Metallica. But then they started pumping out the videos, and I was like, oh, these guys are slowly becoming the rock stars they said they never wanted to be. But um, songs like, uh, what else is on here? Um, Don't Tread on Me Through the Never of Wolf and Man. I still like that song. But um, And The God That Failed, I think, is a great, great heavy song. Um, but I don't go back to this album much anymore. It's just just not, not the Metallica that I know. If I reach for Metallica, it's usually um, Injustice for All and before. Um, some of the newest stuff is kind of heavy. I will say it's a lot better than the Black Album or the self-titled, so that was a no-brainer for me. Um, and metal band that deserves more recognition. I don't even know, and I haven't done enough research to pronounce their name. Um, Misspiring, I think is how you pronounce it. This is their album Al Algamy. Algamy. Um, this is Icelandic black metal. Uh, I don't know why they don't get more attention in the metal community. I think they should. Um, I I like their bland their bland their brand um, of death metal. It's very cold and dark, which makes sense because it's from Iceland. It's heavy. It's melodic. Um, the vocals are slightly different than what you're used to. Very, they're still like that heavy Cookie Monster type vocals. Um, but yeah, I don't know why these guys don't get enough um, love. So I'll put some links below and maybe some of you out there will give them a shot. And the last question, um, your number one grail going into 2021. I don't have anything to show because I can never get this band shit because it sells out so fast. Um, Lamp of Murmur, I think is how you pronounce the name. Um, every time they put out a physical product, it sells out in seconds. And it's usually at an odd time, so I can't jump on it. But I would like to obtain a physical copy um, of one of their albums. I don't really care which one. Um, I have read that a lot of their stuff's going to get repressed this year, 2021. Um, I hope they do more than 50 or 100. I think they've kind of proven that uh, if they put out 500 or 1,000 of anything, it's going to sell. So, um, yeah, that's kind of a, a grail for me going into 2021 is uh, Lamp of Murmur. I'll link them below as well. I can listen to it. I just kind of want a physical um, something to, to hang on to. So, that is it for the Rock Scout um, Metal Tag 2021. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I did. It was kind of fun to think about my collection and answer some of these questions. I'm uh, looking forward to see what you all have on your vinyl, uh, vinyl, I keep saying vinyl tag, your metal tag. There's a vinyl tag one out there. I uh, may do that too. Um, looking forward to seeing some of your metal tag videos and, and uh, discovering some new music as well. So. I hope y'all have a good one. Stay safe out there and have a good one. Later.